Sometimes we're just stuck for ideas. That's why we're speaking to Edward de Bono. Edward de Bono is one of the world's leaders in creative thinking and the father of lateral thinking. He's the author of over 80 books and today he's going to share some of his wisdom with us on how we can have better outcomes with our clients and better outcomes for ourselves in our own lives. Today we're fortunate enough to be speaking to Edward de Bono. He's the father of lateral thinking and the author of 82 books. Edward, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Pleasure. So Edward, you've written a book recently called Think Before It's Too Late. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Aren't we, aren't we all thinking? Well, we believe we're thinking. We're very complacent about our thinking and we are thinking well in a certain way mm -hmm. but we're thinking very much in a judgmental way yes. and what we need to do is thinking more in a design way mm -hmm. how to design a way forward we think in terms of conflicts judgment you're wrong we're going to punish you and so on rather how do we design a way forward mm. you see our thinking originated with what i call the gg3 the greek gang of three yeah. plato socrates aristotle now, when that came to Europe at the time of the Renaissance, schools, universities, and thinking were in the hands of the church. Mm -hmm. The church did not need design thinking or creative thinking or perceptual thinking. What they did need was truth, logic, and argument with which to prove heretics wrong. Yes. So we developed very good thinking for finding the truth, but we have never developed thinking for creating value. So it's time to start doing that. And when you say thinking to create value, what does that mean? Is it values for ourselves, values for society? Uh, value you know? for everything. Value for ourselves, value for society, value for the environment, whatever. Yes. And we say everybody thinks differently. Is thinking something that we practice at or do we just have a natural ability? Some people can think differently to no, others. No, we, we think the way we've been taught at school and education and so yeah. on. And there may be variations in thinking between individuals, but not fundamental differences now. So can we train ourselves to think a little absolutely, bit differently? Absolutely, you can learn my methods either at schools, quite widely taught in yeah. schools around the world or reading I was speaking books. to someone today that says a six-year-old's learning about the six hats. Yes, that's right. It's brilliant. Yes. No, it's around the world, it's quite widely used now in schools and so on. Yes. And the six hats is quite widely known. Can you tell me a little bit about what they are? Well, it's, six hats is an alternative to argument. Argument yeah. is a very primitive, crude way of exploring a subject. Mm -hmm. Six hats means there are six modes of thinking, each one indicated by the color of hat. Under the white hat, everyone looks for information. What do we have? Mm -hmm. What do we need to have? What questions do we want to ask? Under the red hat, everyone is free to express emotions, intuition, feelings, and so on. Under the black hat, people can be critical, looking at the negatives, the dangers, and so on. The mm -hmm. yellow hat, people look for values and benefits. Yeah. The green hat is creative alternatives, new ideas, modifications, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the blue hat is like the organizing hat, decides mm -hmm. what the focus is, pulls together the output, and so on. So everyone is thinking in parallel at any moment, not adversarially. Yeah. And as health professionals, we all have to go to university at some time. Yes. Can you tell me, as well as our university studies, what else should we do to be effective in this world? Well, uh, thinking needs to be developed as a skill. Yeah. Research in England shows that teaching my work in school as a separate subject mm -hmm. improves performance in every subject by between 30 and 100%. Huge improvement. 30 and 100%? Yes. In, wow. In math, science, everywhere. Yes. Wow. So it's very powerful. And is this something that we have to plan? Do we have to set aside some time or, or do we just do no, it whenever we've got time? It's best to set aside some time and be quite deliberate about it. Yeah. The notion of just sitting still and saying, well, I'm a bright person. I'm going to have great ideas doesn't work. And what benefits have you seen in big organisations? So particularly say for example in the health system it's, it's quite big. What benefits have you seen in, in some organisations using some of your techniques? Well it's what they feed back to me. When Nokia started, Nokia was a timber company making paper, they invited me to Helsinki to talk to the group, there's only 70 people. I taught them how to be creative, they've since grown and grown, now they're the biggest in the world with 34% of the world market. 
And that's from a small country with a population of five million and no great history of electronics. Yeah, wow. Because I learned how to be creative and I did it. And when you say creative, are you talking about doing art and those types Absolutely of things? Absolutely not. That's a huge okay. problem that the word creative has been, as it were, hijacked by the art world. <laughs> yeah. Creative means new ideas, new ways of doing things, simpler ways of doing things mm -hmm. and so on. Art is one aspect, but only one aspect. And do you think, you just spoke a little bit about simple ideas, do you think creativity is more simple ideas or complex ideas? Or It can be either. Yeah. Can be either. Creativity implies change, mm -hmm. and as a result of the change, there's new value created. Yeah. And when we're working with, say for example, employees or working with clients, or how do we work out whether, whether there's a different way? Well, I mean, the six hats is a, is a way to allow people to put forward their thoughts in different modes, the critical mm -hmm. mode, the positive mode, the change mode, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so it works very well with employees. And what benefits do you see for society as a whole using a bit more thinking, or I strategically think, thinking, I, I think, suppose? I uh, think much more productive, much more tolerant, much yeah. more peaceful, all these things. And what about happiness for individuals? Well, if you uh, can't think, you're going to be miserable. Because <laughs> the first upset you have, thinking allows you to look at things differently, to take positive steps and do things. Yes. Fantastic. So, Edward, just to finish off, if, there ha if, there has, if there's been something that I haven't covered, could you just give us a few tips? If we're working, particularly in the health industry, what are a few things that you think we should do to enhance our ability to think? And what do we have to do that's ongoing? Well, the a key area is perception. Yes. And people believe things all about logic. Logic is a tiny part of thinking, probably less than 10%. Yeah. Perception is how you look at things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the programs we have in school, which teach youngsters to look at things in different ways, look at them more broadly, more deeply, all these things. So improvement in perception makes a huge difference. Yeah. And can you just explain perception? So is our perception reality? I often hear that perception no, is perception reality. Perception is what we see of reality. Yes, and acknowledging that that's yes. just one yes. one perception. I mean, if you see a beautiful woman scowling, it doesn't mean she's scowling, it means she's got a toothache. <laughs> it could mean that, yeah, that's right. Yes. And what about what we can do to, like, is this an ongoing thing? I suppose there's no there's no end, we just need to keep challenging no, ourselves and growing our There are brain. programs we use in school for improving perception, and yeah. as a result of that, that reduces violence, increases employment, all these things. But if we've missed that in school, is it too late? Not too late, no. Yeah. Not too late. The, there was a, a colleague of mine teaching my thinking to rather old people, 70s, 80s, yeah. and reduced the confusion in their life considerably. Wow. Edward, thank you so much for thank speaking you. with us today. Thank you. So we've just heard the importance of thinking and some great strategies to improve our thinking to improve this world. Edward DeBono, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.